All right, guys, it's October 28th, and tonight I'm going to be talking about Kaiden, I guess, is how it's pronounced. I guess, like, the W is silent in this, I don't know, but I guess it, it means the uh, ghost story or something like that, because this is a movie that contains four short ghost stories. Some are longer than the others. And I only watched the first one last night because I guess the whole thing's like three hours long. And I've got like four more movies to review, basically, or three, I guess. I don't know. We got, well, we got October 28th, 29th, 30th, 31st. So I was thinking, you know, maybe it'd be a good idea just to, for the last four movies, I'll cover these four short films which is basically in one movie, but I may, um, I may change my mind, I don't know, but I'm only going to talk about the first one, which is one of the shortest ones, I think, some of them are like, you know, 40 minutes long, and one's like an hour, I think, and this one, the first one might have been like 30 minutes long. Uh, it is very beautifully filmed. And I've been looking forward to this for a long time. This is like one of the movies that I wanted to watch by the end of this 31 Days of Horror. Like, you know, I wanted to watch House, and I wanted to watch this one, and some of the other ones that I covered that I've never seen before. The special Criterion Collection films. Um, the intro to this has colored smoke. Like, that's what's in the background of this. It's like the smoke. So it shows different colors like blue and stuff, and you can see the trailer for the film in the background, how it's very colorful and whatnot. It's um, based in like old school Japan, like in Kyoto. What's that called? Like feudal Japan or whatever the, the era? I don't know. Anyway, the first one I think was called Long Hair or Long Black Hair. And I guess the stories to these are pretty simple but it's just the presentation that's pretty amazing. And basically there was a guy who had a wife or whatever, and he leaves that wife for a, a wife of a higher status who has a rich family. And um, she, and she, she knows, you know, she ends up coming to the realization or whatever that he married her just because of her money or whatever. And he decides that he ta he's taken, like, his first wife for granted. And he goes back to her. And um, I was kind of not paying attention to every single thing again. So hopefully I'll even get around to watching the next one tonight. But um, anyway, he goes back to, like, the first wife. And from what I've seen, like, he kind of has, like, a vision of you know, holding her or something, but then, he, like, he freaks out and, and realizes that it's like a skeleton, like, she's, like, dead, and, um, you see, like, the skull, like, under her long, beautiful black hair, like, in her clothes and stuff, and he kind of backs away, and, like, the floor's, like, all wooden, it's all broken and, like, caved in, it looks like she fell or something, or, like, I don't know if that was the idea, that, like, she jumped and committed suicide or something, but it seems like she has died by falling through the floor. Maybe that was just for the visual, I don't know. And and he's, like, all old and stuff. Like, he turns, like, all old. It's very kind of, like, nightmarish. And he, like, gets outside. He goes through a window or something. And then, like, outside is in the grass. There's, like, a pink or something blanket or whatever. Some kind of tarp or something. And he goes to grab it, and it turns into, like, her black hair, and then he, like, freaks out, and that's kind of, like, the end of it. <laughs> so, like, it's kind of like she haunts him. I know when, notice when his newer wife says that uh, she, he just married her for the money and stuff, and he took, and she tells him, I think, that, that he took his first wife for granted. She, like, slaps him with a fan, like, one of those fans that they use to cool off. It's like, tsh, tsh, slaps him in the face. But, okay, like, the really cool thing about this short film, this first one, and probably all of them, is the atmosphere. And like I said, the visuals, I guess it was all, like, on a, on a set or whatever. Um, what's really cool about it, like, is the sound, because there's, like, music or sound 
I mean, I don't even know if you call it music. For, like, a lot of the action in the movie, like, there's a scene where he's, like, walking, and he's walking through, I think, like, clothes hanging, like, sheets or something, and he's kind of going through them while it shows, like, his, his old wife or whatever. Like, anyway, while they're doing whatever in the film, you don't hear, like, any of the sound effects of that. You don't hear, like, his footsteps or walking or anything. Like, you're just hearing, like, the music that's playing. The music is just, like, I don't know what instruments it is, but it's, like, really sparse. It's just, like, tch, tch, tch. <laughs> like, it's just these sound effects. It gets you kind of, like, in a trance, like, into the movie. And, like I said, that creates this atmosphere that's kind of creepy, and it keeps you kind of, like, on edge. And, like, while I was watching, I was like, this could very well be, like, the greatest ghost story movie, like, ever. Like, the way that it's produced, like... But that's hard to say, because there are so many. There's so many good ones and so many variations on them. Even some of the ones I've already reviewed, like The Orphanage, you know, it was really good in its own right. But I guess as far as, like, an artistic, like, a very artistic kind of ghost story, yeah. Of course, it has the whole, you know, it's Japanese, and it has that whole theme... But yeah, it's the whole the music kind of putting you in a trance. And then, like, it goes from that to where he's, like, riding on a horse. And he's, like, shooting an arrow. And I don't know if he's, like, celebrating with her rich family or showing off. Or I don't remember really realize what the significance of that was. But he's riding on the horse and you hear, like, the galloping of the hooves. And, like, that's, like, the next, like, transition to where that's, like, all you hear is the galloping of the hooves. Even though it shows, like, his... his former wife or whatever like spinning a a wheel like making clothes or whatever no i don't know what that's called but you know like she's spinning the wheel or doing whatever activities and you're just hearing the galloping and uh yeah it just gets you like in a hypnotic state and just the visuals of the woman how it films her at different angles, very kind of solemn and cold and eerie. So it's kind of a sad story, but it's very, it is very nightmarish. It's like a dream that you would have to where, you know, you dream of seeing a person and then they're like a skeleton, whatever. I think it was effective, and, you know, for being how short it is, it's a pretty big statement. So I'm looking forward to watching these other ones. From what I heard, the longest one is um, The Earless Guy or something. I don't remember how it's, what it says, but I've heard people say that's one of the better ones in it. There's not really much to see in here, I guess. It, it talks about it, but it's just more of the colored smoke, kind of. You see how cool and artsy that is. I guess it's kind of like an alternate. It's two discs set, uh, but I think all the movies on the first one, it's just bonus features. It says, after more than a decade of sober political dramas and socially minded period pieces, the great Japanese director Masaki Kobayashi shifted gears dramatically for this rapturously sized, stylized quartet of ghost stories featuring colorfully surreal sets and luminous cinematography. These haunting tales of demonic comeuppets and spiritual traits adapted from writer Lafcadio Heron's collections of Japanese folklore are extensively ex frightening, frightening and meticulously crafted. This version of Kaiden is the original three-hour cut never before released in the United States. So, you know, I was always interested in this because it popped up all the time for my suggestions, like the surrealness, like I said, you know, just kind of my style up my alley. And just for the cover, it's like, man, that just looks cool. Like, what is that movie? <laughs> and I know it's going to be good if it's in the Criterion Collection. So far, I'm pretty satisfied. So we'll see what the next short stories are like. Like I said, it's pretty short, not much to say about it. There's, you know... 
It's kind of a haunting feel all throughout, but at the end it gives you the spooks. Just the skeleton. And the guys, uh, you know how frightened the guy is. Alright, so that's going to be it. God bless.